when you look at government statistics about the generations, about retention, about labour shortages, I find sometimes that the reporting is very negative and I'll tell you why. When I look around this room, I don't see any shortage of creativity, innovation, enthusiasm. And we can't wait to get back to work to be able to show everybody else what we learned and to really feel good about what we do. In fact, when we get back to work, are you ready? Because we are going to rock this house. I really believe that a negative person has the ability to light up a room when they walk out. <laughs> Every time we have an encounter with a client, with a patient, it's called a moment of truth. And we need to make sure that that moment of truth is memorable, is meaningful and is magical. We know what the number one motivator is for every generation, no matter how old we are. It's appreciation. I'd like you to get a big smile on your face. Come on, let's show teeth. Let's see them, even if they're not yours. Come on. <laughs> big smile, arms out in front of you. On the count of three, I want you to turn to the person next to you and I want you to say with a great big smile, I'm so glad I'm sitting next to you. <laughs> One, two, three. When we look at the word leadership, it has so many meanings. We're going to examine it in the traditional sense in this session, but we also need to realize that every single one of us has the ability to lead ourselves. Personal leadership. We all have the ability to influence other people. It has nothing to do with our job title. When you look at it from the client's point of view, the patient's point of view, they don't necessarily care who's at the top, do they? They don't even necessarily care who's in the middle. What they see is you. So from the client's point of view, those first impressions are what really make the difference. I'm in the city of Calgary and it's nine o'clock in the morning and most of them don't know each other. So my job is to get them motivated, get them excited and I notice very quickly in the corner of my eye, right in the front of the room, somebody didn't look very happy. In fact, it was a gentleman who gave me the finger. <laughs> Well, I, I've never had anybody do that. It hasn't happened yet today, but you never know. <laughs> and so I knew that at that moment I had a choice to be the best version of myself or not. So I took a deep breath and I said, you know, if you decide that you don't want to stay, that's entirely up to you. But if you do stay, it's going to be a great day and I hope you make that decision. And that was all I could do. Would you agree? That was all I could do. I came back up on the stage and I was just about to continue because everybody was sitting down now. And he got up and he looked at me and he said, I haven't finished. <laughs> and I want you to know why I'm leaving. Now, by this point, he had everybody's attention. So I had no choice but to listen to him. Do you ever feel sometimes you have no choice? So he started, he said, I can't listen to your voice. I can't handle one more minute in this room. I can't look at your face, Michelle Ray. <laughs> this is the killer, he said. Because you remind me of my ex-wife. <laughs> Let's do an attitude check right now. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to have a look at the person who's sitting on your left and have a look at who's sitting on your right. Okay, now keep looking 
at who's sitting around you. Just keep looking, and this is what I want you to be thinking. Keep looking. Okay, if one of these people is younger than you, (laughs) here's what should be going on in your mind. You should be thinking to yourself, gee, I wonder if I looked that good when I was their age. (laughs) Okay, now, keep looking. If that person is older than you, what should be going through your mind right now is this. I hope to look that good when I'm that old. (laughs) So here's a hot idea. It's not about our age. What we want to pay attention to is our frame of reference. We are all products of our time. And because of the lens we use to view the world, we see the world differently because we've all been profoundly affected by different events and different things that were going on in the world while we, while we were growing up. So that's the reason why we have differences. We are all products of our culture and economic and social conditioning. Did you know that the average 21-year-old has already watched 10,000 hours of TV? They've already played 10,000 hours of video games. They've been exposed to half a million television commercials. And Generation Y, 21-year-olds already have sent and received over a quarter of a million text messages. Isn't that incredible? Generation Y values authenticity. They know that because they've been taught to express themselves openly, they expect the same thing to be going on at work. You know, a few weeks ago, I went to a recruitment forum in Vancouver. Now, I wasn't speaking at this forum. I went for my own education because I can't get enough of this topic. And it was fascinating. There were hundreds of employers there. There were recruitment people from universities all across British Columbia. And there was also a room full of Generation Ys. And they wanted to pick your brain, Generation Y. They wanted to find out what was going on with you. They wanted to attract you to their workplaces. I'd never seen so many people interested in a recruitment forum. And what stood out for me was a young man by the name of Kita. And Kita is 25 years old, and he addressed the entire room just like I'm addressing it right now. And he said, you know, I don't like being stereotyped. And he described his story. He had come from Haiti to Canada with his family. And he said, you know, my dad was always out of the picture. He worked all the time. I hardly ever saw him. My dad was invisible. And I don't want to be like my dad when I'm working. I want to have a life. I want to have balance. And there was silence, just like there is right now. Think about that. Is that a different value system? Here's what I want you to remember. No matter when we were born, no matter what year it was or what era we fit into, every one of us has a desire to be understood, validated and appreciated. Desire to be validated desire to be appreciated, desire to be understood. Across the board, there is no generational divide when you look at it that way. It's not about us, it's not about them, it's about we. Together, let's build an inclusive workplace, a generation we. When we can all forget about who's right, Everybody wins.